محمد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم کل ولی کے الخجت ابن الحسن صلوات کے علیہ وعلا آبائے فی حاضح الساغتی و فی کل ساغا ولیا و حافظا و قائدا و ناصرا و دلیلا و عینا حتی تسکنہ عرضك توغا و تمتعہ فیہا طویلا Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Dua that we have for today It's Allahumma rizuqni fihi fadla laylatil qadr Allah in this month grant me the virtues of laylatul qadr Wa sayyir umuri fihi min al-usri ila al-yusr And direct my affairs from difficulty to ease Wa qbal ma'adhiri and then you accept my apology and wave and shed my sins and the burden I have O the friendly to his righteous servants so here we uh, one of the duas that we have for today it's that Laylatul Qadr Laylatul Qadr it's either the night, eve of the 19th, 21st or 23rd and there is a faint possibility that 27th may also be Laylatul Qadr. That the Ahl Sunnah, they believe 27th to be the Laylatul Qadr. So again, we do have A'mal in our books as well, but not to that strong possibility or probability of being Laylatul Qadr. But there are these du'as that we have for this night and also this day. Observances is ghusl and the, some of the du'as that we have. And this dua also it says that Allah give me, grant me the opportunity to perceive the virtues of Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr also we talked about it. It's better than a thousand months and it is Salamun hiya hatta matla il fajr until the blowing of the dawn and fajr it is there. Now those who haven't got the, did not get the opportunity to perceive Laylatul Qadr these last 10 nights of the sacred month again they are given that opportunity they can still benefit from whatever they have lost or even says that the night of the first of shawwal that also is of a great uh, azamat that great night of virtues and whatever we've lost we can still get and uh, top up from the eve of the first of shawwal or even says that if you could not benefit from that night, you can still benefit from the day of Eid. So Allah, His mercy, His forgiveness, it's very, very large. He just wants everyone to somehow get on board. The other dua that we have, it's وَسَيِّرْ أُمُورِي فِيهِ مِنَ الْعُسْرِ إِلَى الْيُسْرِ In all my tasks and affairs that I have, Allah, you switch them, move them, from difficulty to ease so make everything easy for me so this is a good dua that you ask Allah to make things easy comfortable uh, relaxing for every one of us min al-usri il al-yusr and also when you look into the ahkam ahkam are also the same all these rulings that we have now this month of Ramadan which was an intense month observances duas Quran talks and presence in being present in majalis and all these it, it wasn't an easy job it was difficult and all then lack of sleep lack of rest lack of food lack of drink so it was all difficult then says in namal osri yusra after all this difficulty there is a lot of ease ahead and allah he wants ease for you in another ayah says yuridullah يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ He wants ease for you. وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ He doesn't want difficulty for you. It says when He wants everything easy for you and Allah has made you in a way that you are weak. So when you are weak, so you have you need ease. You need uh, everything to be simplified. That is what Allah also is after and He has done so. And for this nation of Rasulullah, everything has been made extra simple, extra easy. Even the prayers, fast, whatever you see among the observances that we have compared to the nations who were before us, we have been given the simplest and the easiest 
of all the tasks and actions. Then we ask Allah on this day to accept uh, all the wrong that we have done and to remove the burden of this wrong that we are carrying away from us. I think it's what it was mentioned yesterday that this burden of sins that we carry that is the reason uh, which becomes a hindrance between uh, us waking up for the Fajr prayers or performing the night prayers because there is a heavy load on us and that uh, avoids and doesn't allow us to bow down and worship, doesn't allow us to wake up for worship. So that burden needs to be removed and this is the season when that can be removed and Allah says, you get it removed, I will replace it with good. It was mentioned earlier when we were talking about the wajib sajdas in Quran. So the sajda, it is wajib fawri. Wajib fawri means you have to do it immediately. Some of the actions are wajib fawri, like replying to the salam. It is wajib fawri. Offering the uh, salatul ayat. When there is a tragedy, then you have to do the salatul ayat immediately. You can't delay. When you hear a sajda, a wajib sajda from Quran, you have to bow down in sajda immediately. Just like that, tawbah, repentance from the wrong that we have done, is also wajib fawri. If we have done wrong, a sin we have committed, immediately we have to repent, we have to correct, we have to say astaghfirullah, and that is wajib fawri. Delaying this uh, tawbah, it is called tasweef. Tasweef means postponing. Postponing is haram. So postponing tawbah, it is haram. Performing tawbah immediately, it is wajib. So, ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيب So, mu'mineen who do wrong unintentionally or by mistake they did wrong, Allah says, ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيب And quickly they repent. Allah, the Almighty, He says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ says, now that they have repented quickly, Allah will also forgive them. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ And who is the one who can forgive sins except Allah? So, the moment we do wrong, immediately we have to say, رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَغْفِرْ لِي God, we did wrong, we did bad. You forgive us, He also forgives. So, this is a good habit to have this recital of Astaghfirullah. On the tip of our tongue, the moment we see wrong, the moment we do wrong, the, the moment we say something wrong, quickly, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh, and Allah also, he forgives. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah also forgives them. And who is there apart from Allah who can forgive the sins that we have done? Dua that we have for tonight, that is, it says, يَا خَازِنَ اللَّيْلِ وَالْهَوَىٰ Khazin means the treasurer. He is the treasurer of the night. He is the treasurer of all the winds. So all of these winds, they are co collected somewhere in the treasures of Allah. And he instructs the winds to blow from where to where. And just like that, this night also, the nights that we have, they are treasured somewhere in the treasures of Allah. He holds them where to be given, where night to be given, and how long that night has to be given. All these are the treasures of Allah. And then says, Ya Khazin al fil hawa. It is he who is the treasurer of the night in the winds. Wa Khazin al fil sama. And he is the treasurer of the light of noor in the, in the skies. Wa mani'a al sama an taqa'a ala al ardi illa bi izni. And it is he who does not allow the sky to fall down on the earth but with his permission. So the sky is being held back and that is that command of Allah that is holding it back without any pillars, without any support, this magnificent huge sky, all of that it is held back and it doesn't collapse, it doesn't fall down. That is that might and the beauty of Allah's greatness. وَحَابَسَهُمَا أَن تَزُولَ Ya Alimu, Ya Adimu, Ya Apu, Ya Ghafuru, Ya Daim. O He who is the All Knowing, O He who is the Almighty, O He who is the Forgiving, Ya Daim, O Permanent, O Eternal, Ya Allah, 
Ya warisu ya ba'isu man fil qubur it is he who raises those who will be in the raises those in the graves and then we say ya allah ya allah ya allah lak al asma'ul husna to you belong the good names and to you belongs all these elevated examples the greatness and the bounties and i ask what i've been asking for the past few days that you send salutations upon muhammad wa ali muhammad and that you register my name among the suada the prosperous the successful and that you register my soul among the shuhada and the good i have done to be elevated in the highest of ascensions and the wrong i have done to be forgiven and that you give me a yaqeen and iman which is with me by my heart closest to my heart and you remove all the doubts and all the shukuk that may come across in my uh, to, towards my heart and that you make me content and happy with the destiny that you have designed for me you have decreed for me and i ask you for your remembrance your zikr your shukr and the enthusiasm the shauk towards you and all of that i want from you plus every opportunity that you blessed and you gave muhammad and aulim ali muhammad all of that i want from you ya arhamar rahimin this is that dua and the disclaimer we have in all of these nights of the sacred month last few nights of the sacred month of ramadan we talked about uh, the the presentation of the amal the actions that we do and it was mentioned based upon the ayat of quran that there is a book that is only for me that all my actions from the moment i was born until the moment i die all of that is present in a in a in a in a file which is my personal file and then it was mentioned that there are files which belong to the community that i'm living in so all of the actions performed by, performed by that community all of them they are recorded there and there is another action uh, another file which is a bigger a higher file which has the actions of me in person the community at large and all the creation of the allah the, of the almighty allah all of them they have been mentioned in that file so there are three files and all of these the ayat were mentioned from quran now when you look into the uh, the duas that we just recited especially these last 10 nights towards the end it is always allah keep us away from the fire wa qina adhab an-nar al-hariq from the fire the burning blazing fire of hell keep me away from that so the fire of hell and the desire and enthusiasm to get into the heaven that is the belief in the day of judgment that we have and believing in this day of judgment it has a very beautiful impact in our life so the role maad plays maad means the return return to the almighty in educating our soul so no doubt wahi without wahi this education is not possible لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنْزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ Allah says that we've sent you the, the, the prophets, the apostles with clear signs, with clear arguments and we've sent down with them the book and the balance so that men they may conduct themselves with this justice, with equity. So لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ So the guidance program that Allah has via the prophets and the book it is to revive the belief in the day of judgment and that you live in this dunya with equity and justice equity and justice means that you have to live a life where others they are not hurt and also you don't hurt yourself so that can be when we have something in our mind and that is to do with akhirah in this dunya if there are some laws and rules that are made that can be tampered if someone wants not to commit a crime during the day he can hide and he can do it at night or he can do it somehow in hiding so that no one finds out but then there is an a system or a belief system that we have which doesn't allow us to do that wrong may that be during the day may that be during the night may that be before the sights of others or even behind the sights of others it doesn't matter So when we have that belief system that we there is an akhirah there is a qiyamah 
an account has to be given and there is someone watching us and all these actions are being recorded for that day of judgment. So if with that mindset, with that ideology, no one would do wrong. And we see in Quran there are two sets of ayat. One of them states that Wazkur Abd Wazkur Ibadana Ibrahim wa Ishaq wa Yaqub Ulil Aidi wal Absar. Remember our servants Ibrahim, Ishaq and Yaqub, who are they? Says Ulil Aidi, men of power, strong. Wal Absar, men of insight. So they are strong, they are men of power, they are men of insight. So what is special in them? Says, Inna akhlasnahum bi khalisatin dhikradar. Allah says we purified them with a purifying. And that is they remember the day of judgment. They remember dhikradar. Zikr means remembering. Dar means home. So they remember the home. Home is the akhirah. Home is not dunya. Zikr al-Dar, Zikr al -akhira. Now there are other ayat in Quran, for example one of them uh, when it, Allah talks about Mu'mineen says Tilka al-Dar al-Akhiratu naj'aluha lil-lazina la yuriduna uluvan fil ardi wala fasada Tilka means that house, that abode. Which one? The one you have in the Akhirah. So that is that house, not this one. This one is just a transit lounge, a transfer area. So Allah says that house and that home of yours that we have created for you, made for you in the Akhirah is for those who do not cause corruption in the land. La yuriduna uluvan fil ardh. They don't want any kind of an excellence or any kind of a pride in the land. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqin. Aqiba and the good end is for the pious, the God weary, the muttaqin. So Allah recognizes akhirah as the home. And over here in this ayah states that the reason why Allah excelled and exalted these prophets, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, is because they remember their home. On the contrary, there is another ayah. That states that in Ladina Yaviluna An Sabilillah as for those who go astray from the path of Allah, Lahum Adabun Shadidun, they have a severe punishment. Why? Bima Nasu Yawmal Hisab because they forgot the day of judgment. So in the first ayah says because they remember the day of judgment, Allah has excel excelled them. Allah has exalted them. In the second ayah says for them it is there is a painful punishment because they forgot the day of judgment. So remembrance of the day of judgment and then forgetting the day of judgment. So these two ayat when you put them together and then those who remember the day of judgment and their abode which is the home with the akhirah they are the ones who will be the prosperous. They who forget the Day of Judgment are the ones who will be the losers. We talked about the books where the actions will be recorded. So it's a personal book of mine. There is a community book and then there is a larger book where everything has been recorded. And it was mentioned that on the Day of Judgment there will be 50 stops and stations. These are known as mawaqif. Mawaqif is the plural of mawqif. Mawqif means stop, that is holding area. That in the akhirah there are 50 holding areas. The day of judgment according to Quran says khamsina alfa sana. It is one day of judgment and that is 50,000 years, the duration of that day. And we have 50 holding areas. That is the maximum duration of time required in every holding area is 1000 years. So what are these holding areas? It says we have, now we haven't got a hadith that, could, that mentions all of these 50 mawaqif in one place. So we've got different various ahadith that have mentioned and talked about these mawaqif. So there is a mawqif, there is a holding area where people will be stopped to get their prayers checked. That is, Salat throughout my life, how did I offer? 
So when it comes to Salat, it is going to be an itemized check. That is, the wuzu will be looked into, the water that was consumed for wuzu will be looked into, the place where this wuzu was done will be looked into, and then how I performed that wuzu, whether it was with a taqlid, with the fatwa of a mujtahid, and every little bit of it will be checked into, and the wuzus that I performed, all of them, how were they, right or wrong, and then it comes to salat, how did I offer my salat, with my intention, what my intentions, and the format and the tartib, how I was taught and educated. Did I do that salat as I was educated by the Prophet? Or it was something that I added on myself and did something all by myself. So all this, that one, that one mawqif, one holding area will be for salat. Another holding area for zakat, zakat, charity and zakatul mal. One of them, it is the zakatul fitr that we pay at the end of the month of Ramadan. The other zakatul mal, it is on the produce that we have. If I'm a farmer, if I've got lands and crops and wheat and grain and raisins, dates, etc. I've got livestock like camels and cows and sheep. And if they reach a certain number, a certain amount has to be given away as zakat. Or if I have surplus gold and silver, not the gold and silver that generally women have in their homes, that khums and zakat doesn't apply to that. It's a gift. No khums and again no zakat because it is in her own use. Zakat and khums, surplus means someone does the, use it in business and buying and selling and trading. That is where the zakat applies to. So there is zakat on them. So one holding area for zakat. Another holding area for silatur rahim. That is breaking ties and making ties with the family members. That how did I deal with my family members, my immediate family, and then my extended family? So that is Silatur Rahim, and, and as a holding area for Silatur Rahim. And Silatur Rahim, if someone does that with his family members, Taqi Maitata Su, he will not have a tragic death, he will not have a bad death. Says you do good to your family, to your near ones, to your loved ones, to your extended family you will be given a longer life. And Hadith says that every time you do good to them, 30 years will be increased to your lifespan. 30 years means 30 years of extra opportunity to do more good, more hasanat, more worship, more ibadah, and to get closer and nearer to Allah. Wa ta so that is one mawqif. Another holding area will be the holding area for haqqun nas, the rights of the people, that is the wrong that we have done to them, money matters, hurt someone, beaten someone, or in words, or in actions, whatever, so that is going to be another holding area. So all these holding areas will be there, which are known as mawaqif, mawqif is the singular. Now, now we have... In Quran, there are all these ayat. Sometimes, when you look into the meanings of these ayat, you come to you find them. They are contradicting statements regarding the criminals on the day of judgment in the Holy Quran. For example, on one place, the Almighty He states that addressing the criminals, "La tadul yawma sabura, saburan wahidan, wadu saburan kathira." So they will be told, do not pray, do not cry out loud for a single destruction today, but pray for many destructions, many annihilations. So in one place says that, uh, states that uh, they will cry out loud, these criminals. In another place, the ayah says that uh, they will not be allowed to speak up. They will not be allowed to cry, to shout and to pray. They will not be allowed. So one here in this ayah states that people, they will be crying out loud. In another place says that they will not be allowed to. When Imam was inquired, Imam says that it, it's all these different mawaqif. So in some mawaqif, some holding areas, you will be allowed to speak. You will be allowed to shout and uh, cry out loud. In some holding areas, you are not permitted to and you will not be able to cry. So, mawaqif, they all differ. Situations, they differ. In some situations, in some, some holding areas, they will be allowed to speak. 
in some handholding areas they will not be allowed to speak so mushrikeen also when we see the ayat of quran mushrikeen on the day of judgment they say that we were not faithless now they were mushrik they were faithless but then they over there in qiyamah they say wallah wallahi rabbuna ma kunna mushrikeen we were not faithless although they are lying now why are they lying and on the day of judgment here says that when someone gets used to some uh, some uh, some ad- some things if he's used to lying he will lie on the day of judgment as well but when he sees that nothing is going in his favor all those evidences that are being presented the films the clips that are being shown everything is against him then he will change his statement just like what we do in this world we go and lie and lie until it's proven that there is no way for me to get out of that situation there we go and admit says that when someone is used to something he continues with that wherever he be may he be here in this world or may he be in the akhirah so they were liars in dunya they will remain liars in the akhirah there they would say that wallahi rabbana ma kunna mushrikeen that we were not mushrik o lord we were not faithless and later when they see that nothing is going to be hidden and nothing is here hidden from anyone there they say that la yaktumun allah haditha and they will not conceal and they will not hide anything then now dunya is the same when a criminal is caught he continues denying he continues lying later he admits and he um, that he was lying now when all the evidences are against him the situation is different in the akhirah also this faithless lot initially they will lie they will deny but then when they see that they are getting caught they will change their statements now all these promises also that we have in quran there are swearings that these people they have there is crying that they have and that also will not help them for example in one place in the glorious quran with reference to this uh, these hypocrites and these mushrikeen it says that yahlifuna lahu kama yahlifuna lakum they will swear to him just like they swear to you now here in this dunya there are so many people they swear they say wallah tallah billah this is what has uh, happened and when everything is a lie they would do the same thing in the akhirah as well or for example the munafiqin the hypocrites surah al munafiqin says that ittakhazu aymanahum junnatun that many in dunya they get away by these oaths and promises and they think they can do the same in the akhirah so some get away in this dunya by crying tears you see many people they are there they will come to you and they will have eyes filled with tears and the statements the way how they present uh, drama queens and we think that yeah they are saying the truth quran says the same quran says that the brothers of yusuf they ditched him in the well they came to the father now father is a masum is a prophet now here they come to the father waja'u abahum isha'an yabkun yabkun means crying so they come to the father crying that father this is what has happened now here in this dunya they cry they weep they yell they Uh, have these statements and get their things uh, accepted in the akhirah also for a short term they would try to do these use these tactics when they would see that nothing is working everything is going against them they would switch now hisab and accountability of undone actions also will be seen in our action report now this is scary and we have to be extra cautious and careful certain things that we did not do we have to give an account for that as well and this is going to be the most painful and the most difficult part in the akhirah things that we did not do but we helped someone in wrong we have we served someone indirectly in get in in a sin now for example there is a hadith you have heard that it is from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam rasulullah he curses and he sends his la'nat on 10 groups of people says that liquor alcohol wine says the farmer the grower who grew this um, grape with the intention of making alcohol curses on him 
the buyer who buys that grape to to squeeze them and make them into wine lanat on him the middleman the manager lanat on him the staff the workers helping in grinding and making that wine lanat on them the bottler makers of bottles labels boxes lanat on them the packaging industry lanat on them transporters of this la- alcohol liquor and wine lanat on them seller buyer th- those who serve those who present those who offer every middleman lanat on the entire all of them the whole system so riwayat they are so strong ziyarat ashura also has the same ziyarat ashura says awwal zalimin zalama haqq muhammadin wa al muhammad that is lanat be on that first one who usurped and who oppressed the rights of muhammad and al muhammad who are the first ones the first ones are the first two and then slowly you see that it grows and it grows wa akhira tabi'in la and the last one also whoever he was says lanat on all of them so those who destroyed the rights of muhammad and ali muhammad now they were the direct those who were involved directly lanat on them and in this ziyarat ashura towards the end we say wa shayat shayat means those who assisted them assisted them in fulfilling and doing what they wanted to do shayat it's from tashyi tashyi means you say that tashyi janaza tashyi janaza means to see off that that body being laid to rest that is tashyi tashyi of a funeral means seeing off that deceased so here shayat they were doing something wrong and now we are seeing off we are seeing that what they are doing so we also are included in them wa tabaat tabaat means those who followed those who followed those who were directly involved and there are people who are not directly involved but they are following the same system so lanat on them as well wa la'anallahu ummatan sami'at bi dhalika fa radiyat bi now curses and lanat on that nation who heard and they were okay with it they heard this is what happened to in karbala this is what happened with imam rida this is what happened with imam mahdi alaihi salam this is what happened with imam askari this is what is happening with the muslims this is what is happening with the shias if you support them if you buy this product it's going to be directly or indirectly serving an uh, an um, a cause which is fighting you if we are okay with it that lanat applies to us as well لَعَنَ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً سَمِعَتْ بِذَلِكَ Those who heard فَرَضِيَتْ بِهِ That is, they were okay with it. Okay with whatever they heard. So this one is a scary part that many of these actions that we did not do in our life, we are accountable for that and it will be written in our books as if we have done those actions. أَعَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَالسَّيِّعَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا Allah protect us from our own evil and protect us guard us from the wrong that we do wa subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ajjil farajahum